So you finally got tired of the cops showing up over weird smells coming out of your garage or your closet. And you might be thinking, well, Connor, I want to practice chemistry. I just don't have the space for the supplies. Well, that's where a fume hood comes in handy. And today, I'm going to show you how to build one really cheap. A couple basic things you're going to need are different sizes of wood. If you can get a fully enclosed cabinet, that's great. I don't have it right now. So instead, I'm just going to be framing in a wood box that's about three by three by five feet and then enclosing it in plastic and plexiglass or Lexan for the front. You're going to want a fan or two. The higher the CFM flow, the better. Airflow is everything when it comes to a fume hood because without moving air, you're just doing chemistry in a box. I have a carbon filter. I've got about 38 feet of duct work to route it out where I want it to go. I have the rubber window seals, LEDs and mounting tape, a thermometer and hygrometer to keep track of what's going on inside the fume hood. You're also gonna want a clean bucket. If you wanna run clean water in and out, you're gonna need a vessel to keep it in. So I'm gonna be using this. And I also picked up a new pump. Uh, this one flows about 80 gallons per hour, uh, which is good enough for most things I'm gonna wanna do. In addition, I picked up a couple extra things. I have a fan speed controller. I have a temperature controller, thermocouple, and some heating tape. So I can make a heating mantle. And I'm gonna be using that in a different video later on. As well, I have uh, four inch plastic couplings to connect the ventilation system all together. And this plastic sheeting is gonna be the sides of my fume hood. Of course, you're going to want something to be able to connect the fans into the fume hood, and that's where these come in. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is measure out and cut the wood that you're going to be using for the box enclosure for the fume hood. You're going to need a few basic supplies. I would recommend grabbing a drill, something to cut the wood with. And now, the first thing you're going to want to do is measure and cut the wood for the dimensions of the fume hood you're going to make. Next, you're going to drill your holes and install the screws on the first layer. Make sure as you go to keep everything as even as you possibly can. I'm using Loctite Premium in between where every screw is going to keep everything nice and tight together. In addition, screwing it down, and go ahead and put two going up. Start the top piece to keep them in line. So you build your square base, then you build another identical base, four support beams going up, then you're going to attach your second to the top. The Loctite adhesive is finally dry, I put it in all four sides, so this should hold pretty well. two squares, one for the bottom, one for the top, and we've installed four sides. Now what we're going to do is add a space for the fans to go and we're going to need just a little bit more wood for that. We're also going to need two extra pieces of wood about the same length as the height and that's to wedge in our plexiglass. We're going to want to keep a nice tight seal on it because again the whole point of this is to keep fumes inside from getting out. So what I did was got rubber window seal and we're going to put that on another piece of wood on the inside in between the plexiglass and the actual fume hood. Hopefully that'll keep a nice seal for us that'll keep fumes inside. But before we do that, let's try and get the fans in. Same 
length of weather seal. And before you cut, make sure this fits in your box, just in case. So now the main part of the box is built and your adhesive is dry, your screws are in, you have something a little bit more stable to work with. Now we're going to create the slide for the front and we're finally going to start sealing it in. Starting off, we're going to add a second piece of wood right behind the front two pillars and that's going to be to support the plexiglass. Then you're going to make a second frame to go behind it and it's going to sandwich in the plexiglass so it has somewhere to slide and keep it in place. Now that both sides are level and in place, we're going to put two screws just to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. So we've managed to get the frame built. What we want to do now is get a second frame and what this is going to do, it's going to sit behind these two front pillars and it's going to kind of sandwich in the plexiglass with a seal so no air leaks through. And that'll also act as our guide channel for raising and lowering it. So first we're going to set the frame in and then our plexiglass behind it. We're going to bring it in to sandwich it. We're going to mark how high the plexiglass sits so that we can install another piece just below the edge of this and that's where our top seal is going to be. Our side seals are going to be on the one behind this so that when the air is pulling from inside kind of should suck the plexiglass to it and create a, an air seal so you don't have nearly as much leaking air. Now we'll kind of have this shape and we're not so worried about completely sealing the bottom because that's where we want all the air to pull from. So they have a term for that and it's called uh, face velocity. And you want that to be at, a, I believe, a minimum of about 100 CFM. Here, and these are weaker, but I'm using two 200 CFM flow exhaust vent fans. Uh, and hopefully that should do the trick. Once your seals are dry from the glue, the next thing you want to do is install the plexiglass. To get it to the point where it's pressing down and creating a seal, but not so tight that you can't freely move it. Be sure when you drill the holes into the rear frame, you're squeezing down to the level that you need to put pressure on the plexiglass. Otherwise, when you put the screws in, it's not going to be as tight as it needs to. And with those in, you should be able to grab it, lift. In my case, it's perfect because it holds itself, but I'm still going to be installing a handle for this. Now you might run into a problem where the corners of this either hit the edges or start to slide out because there's nothing stopping it from moving and shifting in ways that you don't want. So to remedy that, I've got this is like a one by six board. I'll be using a set of PVC cutters to split the wood. So we should end up with a cut that's right about where we need. Perfect. The plexiglass is coming out and interfering with the uh, corners of the wood here. So we're going to lift it back into place We'll be basically using one of these to install over. 
And if you really like, you can use a router tool and cut a small, shallow groove if you can keep it straight for the plexiglass as a kind of guide. Now another thing that I've done for the ventilation of the fume hood is I've made these two kind of four inch U-shaped pieces. And what these are gonna do is they're gonna hold the four inch vent adapters and they're just gonna sit in. These will be mounted to the frame and then there will be a, a four inch hole cut using this template and that'll be through uh, the actual cover that I have to enclose it. About this time is also usually a good idea to go ahead and throw in your lighting system. I'm going to be using uh, stick-on LEDs, but it's nice to be working and still be able to see what you're doing inside. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Also really good to make sure that you seal around the fan access into the fume hood to make sure that there's no leaking air. While you're installing the side panels and the top and the bottom and sealing everything in, Always make sure your electricity and whatever fittings you have for your, your water, if you're doing it external or anything else, make sure you have your stuff ran through and know where it's going to go before you seal everything in and then you have to start cutting holes and stuff you didn't want to in the first place. And for me, that's going to be a six power strip outlet and then I'll be running water lines in and out of it as well. Top, side, side, and the bottom. If you're doing wood or metal, it's probably okay to mount it from the bottom, but because I'm using something that's thin and light like this and is very flexible, I'm actually going to do it from the inside, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap it around the wood and then down to create kind of like a, a pan liner. So if anything spills, it doesn't immediately try to flow out or start dissolving the, uh, the caulking I'm going to use around to seal everything in. And lastly, to install the bottom. Now we have it all about sealed in. This is a great time to get the caulking done inside just to seal everything up and make sure it's as airtight as you could possibly get it. And that does include the air intakes, depending on how many you have and where they're at, and also what kind of chemicals you'll be working with. You might want to adjust the materials you're using inside it. That includes both the caulking and the intake adapters. I'm going to be using general purpose silicone because it's resistant to most of what I'll be doing and it's all light stuff anyway. And then right after that, getting installed the fan. So this is the fan work, all the uh, plumbing that sits above the fume hood. It's not sealed in yet, but it's still pretty efficient, at least somewhat, and it'll be going out the window there. I want you guys to hear this when it kicks on and demonstrate what it does even when it's not sealed properly. Close it. That's all just going right up into those. I want to also touch really quick on something I really don't see in a lot of videos discussing fume hoods or really venting anything dealing with uh, 
chemicals, hazards, and stuff like that. And that's filtration. When you're dealing with fume hoods, you're gonna have exhaust air that has to go somewhere. And most people just think, well, out. But it's a little bit more complicated than that. And there should be a refining process of the air somewhere in your air exhaust setup. This will be in a box in line filtering out all the air coming out of my fume hood. And then at the end of it will be a charcoal canister. And this is what's gonna reduce the odor and further refine for cleaner air coming out of my exhaust system. There's also different grades of fume hoods. Certain ones will allow air to actually be recirculated inside of it once it gets pushed through a filter or it just recirculates back in or possibly even pulls it from here and pushes it back into the air right around you, around the fume hood. Type 2 fume hood, or 2A, and above, do not allow any kind of recirculation either into the fume hood or your immediate area. It actually has to be vented completely outside in a way where it has no access coming back in. So this is set up to kind of mimic a 2A, and it's not near the quality needed. But the idea is nothing inside the fume hood or in this room is going to get pushed back in. It's going to get sucked up, pushed outside after being refined and into the open air. There's also a guideline sheet you can kind of work on if you really want to make a better setup. Um, and I'll link in the description below a PDF document. I can't remember the source, but it explains... Um, how to properly vent when dealing with uh, fume hood chemicals and stuff like that. And that's it. That's an easy DIY fume hood. Make sure you seal it in properly. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Please consider liking and subscribing. Be greatly appreciated. Thank you guys so much.